Uh, hello, my Taurus friends. This is Dr. Shiny with a general tarot reading for the month of March. Uh, welcome, and uh, if you haven't already done so, please check out my introductory videos, which will give you a little bit of uh, information on how the reading uh, progresses um, and uh, how I approach tarot reading and what you can expect to get out of this and all that. Um, so those are some pretty valuable videos. Make sure you check those out, but I'm going to get right into your reading today. Um, I'm going to be honest, this reading feels very esoteric to me, um, very sort of conceptual, so if uh, any of you have like a specific way in which these um, cards related to you in more of the physical realm, um, I'd be really interested to know about it because um, this is in particular like a, a very esoteric one for me, so it'd be, it would be valuable for me to see how this sort of situation applies to real life um, and essentially give me more experience to draw on in the reading. So uh, any help you could give me is very appreciated there. Um, what I have for your current situation is the Empress. The Empress is uh, someone who embodies uh, the ideal feminine energies, uh, spirit. Um, it's sort of a sometimes associated with pregnancy, but in this specific reading, it, it may not be uh, pregnancy so much as uh, just the idea of feeling sort of pregnant with an idea, <laughs> uh, that kind of thing, like inspiration, uh, um, power, like fruitfulness, you know, that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> what's influencing you is strength. And uh, it feels like you've been sort of feeding off of uh, your intuitive uh, divine feminine properties, but um, perhaps in this situation you haven't been putting a whole lot of effort into the divine masculine uh, uh, properties either, and we all need both. We all need to seek both uh, and have some sort of a balance of both. Um, but this card is really uh, suggesting that you've you've been more entertained or more uh, served by using sort of like, uh, I don't want to say manipulation because that has a bad connotation to it, but it's like if, if you want something, you create a safe environment for it to occur in, right? So with this, uh, with this kitty here, <laughs> um, this character is very, very kind, very compassionate. So she creates a safe space, right, where the lion, this this bigger, more powerful creature, can come in and feel safe, and then uh, usually in return for this sort of like symbiotic relationship, uh, she gets the protection, right, of something, something else or something like that. And so um, you are very much navigating your reality in terms of other people and, and fluidly in harmony with other people. Um, and I can see that, um, but what's in your past was the Two of Cups, which is a uh, trusting, uh, sort of ideal, emotionally fulfilled uh, relationship. So um, maybe you've been like searching, you've been continuing on a path, even though you've uh, sort of left behind something that you know to be ideal. Um, Perhaps that's because you feel as though you're like drawn to some higher quest, or uh, I also see, well, let's say in the in the future is the Knight of Coins, and the way that I read the future card is like this is sort of where the energy that you're implying or um, uh, the energy that you're using in the current situation, it's leading you down this path um, and you have a choice as to whether you want to go down that path and commit to it or you want to back up and choose some other direction so the knight of coins is very like um, it's it's ambition but almost sometimes in a negative sense so it can be stubborn it can be like you have a specific view of what you want in the future and uh, almost like almost a perfectionist type of thing to where you're not going to settle for anything less than the absolute best you can imagine and that kind of thing. Um, and so what that means is like you're getting so good at your method of um, sort of 
energy manipulation, uh, law of attraction, um, just being a good person and attracting other good things to you, uh, you're getting so good at it that you may keep employing that technique uh, too much, out of balance, because you constantly are searching for the perfect uh, scenario. And you can, you can do that uh, to a certain extent, you know, to find something that you can be happy with, but there's always an extra step in there. So you're never going to get the perfect thing just dropped in your lap it's going to have to take a little bit of work. It's like you get the perfect piece of clay dropped in your lap and then it's your responsibility to mold that into something that feels personal that you can form a personal connection with because otherwise it's always something foreign, you know. So you have to be able to put some of your own effort and own uh, sort of creative spin on whatever it is that you're trying to form this emotional connection with and that could be a metaphor for art as well. So you can't just say, oh, well, I think I'd like to paint uh, a barn or something. If you're just totally not on that page, you have to, so, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I guess you could um, in an ironic way, but to really like capture the spirit of that barn, it's going to take more than you just browsing pictures on the internet. Like you're going to have to have a history of knowing what it, what it smells like to be in a barn and that kind of thing. And the, the more you have that emotional connection to the scene that you're trying to depict, the more it will come through in sometimes unexpected and subtle ways, you know? So that's just an idea. But, uh, the foundation of the situation is the Ace of Swords. And this represents a, a new idea that is, somewhat volatile so it um, I see a theme in in this reading of your sort of your power your creative power comes as the result of you reinforcing a particular du uh, duality of your spirit you know what I mean so um, the spiritual progression is sort of uh, moving toward um, serenity or oneness with the environment you, you know as you become more enlightened you start to see everything is perfect right but then you bounce you know you wave you go in and out ebb and flow and the sort of wave to that trough is to um, use your power in the physical realm here or your power of influence and manipulation to try to change the world or to make it uh, a better place as you see fit, right? But so there's always a, an ebb and flow because you go from making a change to understanding that everything is fine, you know what I mean? But you have to keep going through that cycle. It's sort of like a growth process. And uh, this Ace of Swords, uh, it, the idea is that it is very double-edged. It's very, um, everything you do is going to have profound consequences or reactions in another way. Um, and but it's it's a exciting new beginning and it's not uh, something that you should stray away from um, but it's something that you're going to have to probably learn a new lesson in um, so keep that in mind on your your higher thoughts your crowning thoughts um, is the chariot um, and the chariot this is another card if you see these little seahorses are kinda like tugging the opposite directions um, so it's another card uh, reinforcing duality and sort of the conflicting nature of things um, uh, when you're in that dualistic spirit anyway. And the chariot in particular has an energy of it kind of like vehicular. So it's like uh, perhaps there's like a good, healthy, natural, organic way to do things. And then there's like a fast... Uh, we might hit a dog on the road, but we're going to get there faster or, you know, that kind of idea. There's like some specific drawbacks to kind of taking the, the fast track, uh, the dark side, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, but this is heavy on your mind. So you're perhaps thinking you're, you're trying to obtain some sort of balance that propels you forward in like a good direction. Uh, so I think that perhaps maybe one of the lessons that you need to to focus on is that uh, there's no rush. Like you don't have to get there uh, on a on a really fast track. You know, like the idea, the goal, the full God realization will be uh, complete contentment 
just as you are, like just, you know, not arriving at some destination. So that's going to be the thing that you're going to need to focus on to sort of bring those two uh, conflicting energies back into to balance, you know, is, uh, and that's your actual advice card too. Um, it's the world, which uh, suggests, you know, completion of cycles, enlightenment, um, full God realization. It's, uh, sorry, my cat keeps opening the door. Uh, <laughs> it's um, sort of a, uh, the advice that it's giving you here, and it, it feels like you already know what this is talking about, that this isn't like the first time you've approached this sort of awakening, enlightening uh, mumbo jumbo, <laughs> and uh, this makes sense to you. Um, so what it's saying is do some meditation, some self-reflection, and realize that you have gone down this path and done a lot of good and it's been successful for a while, but there's got to be a balance and there's a time to swing back in to uh, the other way of thinking. And doing so will unlock new challenges and new versions of you, new, um, perhaps even new abilities, you know, like you sometimes start noticing things or you're more aware of the situation than you used to be. And so it like makes it easy for you to help a, a person in your life with a problem that you'd always been trying to ch figure out or something like that and then all of a sudden you it clicks and there's harmony there so um, you're sort of if you've been you know on some sort of a binge it's time to take a tolerance break if you've been uh, you know just go 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 it's time for you to take a day off of work and center yourself, get your mind together and all that. And that's where the new stuff is going to come in. Um, your current environment is the Ten of Cups, uh, which suggests at least the, the potential that all around you is the opportunity for tremendous emotional fulfillment. Um, or perhaps people who feel very emotionally fulfilled, even if you don't, because you're... Um, you can tune in to another person's energy in such a way that uh, it infects you in a way, or um, that sounds negative to say it that way, but it, it rubs off on you. You start feeling happier even though you don't necessarily have as much of a reason to be happy as these people. So, um, you know, use that sort of peer pressure thing uh, to your advantage. Expose yourself to energies that you, you want to uh, emulate and emit yourself and that will um, it you know it's like self and your brain is like a computer and if you're not controlling the programming somebody else is so just keep that in mind um, your fears card is the queen of wands and um, so the queen of wands has uh, again a very powerful uh, energy powerful feminine energy associated with it, uh, but it's sort of on a different spectrum than like the strength and the empress, which is your current situation. It's really more of like a direct um, influence. So the strength, the feminine uh, strength uh, altogether is sort of this power of influence, this power of uh, manipulating the environment to make things easier or difficult, which uh, sort of changes the the rules for people playing the game, <laughs> if you know what I mean. And so you can manipulate the rules a little bit with this divine feminine energy and uh, make it a more favorable situation for you and others. And whether you use it selfishly or selflessly uh, is going to basically just determine how people see you, but you get the idea. Well, the Queen of Wands energy in comparison is more about using your raw willpower in the light of day out in the open. Um, you can see she's kind of even planting a garden there. So she's using the light of the sun, but in a very uh, sort of innocent and organic, natural way. She faces people directly and tells them what she wants and tells them what she wants to do instead of like the manipulation behind the back type of thing. And you're maybe fearing this a, a little way because the, uh, the game player has become sort of your facade, your... Uh, protection from the world around you, your defense mechanism. And so to really drop your guard and let another person know what's deep, deep in your heart is going to be something that's a little bit 
scary if you haven't done it in a while. Even if you used to be really good at it, if you haven't done it in a while, you know, you forget that it is, um, it is something that takes some courage to do. Uh, but you have courage, but you just need to remember it. Um, your overall message today is the Five of Swords. Um, and the Five of Swords, it, it's a card that involves, like, conflict. Um, I feel like this conflict may have something to do with your, your Two of Cups, uh, what's happened in the past, a past relationship. And it's caused you to, like, really run down this path that you're on, and that's brought you out of balance because you're not, you're not, you know, ebb and flowing <laughs> like you're supposed to. Um, and if you did that, you would kind of, your perspective would change a little bit and you wouldn't feel so attacked, um, or so vulnerable. You would feel like you had more power, like, like the Queen of Wands, who's like very proud and out in the open, not hiding, not, um, not feeling like you have to sort of cower down around other people or maybe around like specific, like love interests and things like that. Um, once you learn to bring forth like a little bit of confidence in the situation and uh, trust that there are people who are not just self-involved and only interested in themselves but they are interested in what makes you excited, what makes you passionate and that kind of thing, uh, you can kind of snap out of this uh, victimization feeling um, and it's only a vague victimization feeling I feel like because it's sort of uh, it's it's been coped with and you have become sort of like a, a good like a guru teacher or something you know you're grooming people around you um, even if it's just subconsciously um, as the result of being scarred or uh, hurt or something like that so you've you've dealt with it in a positive way but you have got to learn to let go of it as well you've got to learn to move on to a new phase in your life um, and that's kind of what this is was this is saying is that your overall message is that if you're feel, feeling a little weary or um, like there's uh, some conflict in some way it's really just time for a, a perspective shift and um, to look around you at what you have <laughs> and be grateful and that kind of thing and start to focus on the world as perfect as it is you know um, and it may not be so that it is perfect as it is uh, but to to, a, to take on and assume that belief um, can sort of steer your boat the right direction. You know what I mean? It's like, m sure, maybe I don't want to actually go all the way 180 degrees, but I might have to turn my sail 180 degrees just to get going the direction that I want to go. You see what I'm saying? So uh, that's the overall message here is that it's time for like a direction shift a little bit in your, in your uh, path forward. Uh, let me know what you thought about that. Like I said, that was a very esoteric one for me. I couldn't, I couldn't see many specific scenarios where this sort of idea has applied to me. Um, and I think that's possibly because I'm a man and uh, I have by no means a mastery of the divine feminine energy. So uh, <laughs> just let me know what you think and uh, I'll see you guys next month. Okay, bye-bye.